Hello, this is Matthew Campagna from theturninggate.net. Uh, I had a recent question on the blog about how I create my identity plates uh, for my demo galleries for Lightroom and thought that would make a nice topic for a brief tutorial. Um, I make my identity plates in Photoshop. I don't like to do it in Lightroom uh, because the font spacing tends to to have some, some issues so that you might have some extra space uh, trailing or preceding your identity plate so the centering uh, can be off sometimes, uh, which I don't like. So I make all of my identity plates as graphical identity plates uh, in Photoshop. And the way I do that is I start off with uh, a document, a square. Um, this square is 600 pixels by 600 pixels. Um, and the first thing I'm going to do is fill this space with black um, because I'm going to place my type in white. Um, so I like to use Adobe Garamond Pro. Um, it's what I use for all of my professional uh, correspondence and for any type of branding that I do these days. Um, so all I'm going to do is just write my name, the turning gate. Um, and you can get here in the panel and scrub this until it's a size that you like. Then I downloaded some brushes from BrushEasy.com. Um, they're free, and they've got some really neat brushes. And I just grab a brush. I'm going to use this one. And you need to make a new layer for that. It's a little large, so I'm going to size it down. And I'm just going to use that to uh, I'll plop that on top of my eye. Something like that. Just nudge it in place until it's where you like it. Um, if you're adding any type of flourish. And you can put a lot more flourishes all over the place if you like. I'm going to keep it at that one just for now. Um, and then what I do is I come over here to my layers palette. And I merge these layers by pressing command E on Windows. I suppose that's probably control E. Um, then I can command click that layer to select the content uh, and I crop it. Um, this gets rid of any dead space that you might have in the image. Um, I check the image size, make sure that it's a web appropriate width. Right now it's 413 pixels wide, which is fine. Uh, I could make it wider if I wanted to, but for this demonstration that will do nicely. Um, if it's more than six or seven hundred pixels or if it's just too tall, at that point, I would want to just scale it down a little bit. Um, but that won't be necessary here. So the next thing I do is just turn off the background so that I have transparency. And then I'm going to go up to the File menu and Save for Web and Devices. Make sure this is set to PNG24. That way it will preserve your transparency and then save the identity plate to a location where you can keep it around. I'll just stick it on my desktop for now, call it ID plate. And that's it for Photoshop. So now I just jump back into Lightroom, click on my identity plate, select edit, make sure I have enabled use graphical identity plate there, then locate file. <clears throat> My hard drives are spinning up. Um, then you just go to the location where you saved the file. Choose. Hit OK. And it updates your identity plate. As you can see, that's the one I just made. Um, next thing I do is I'll just adjust the header height to accommodate the identity plate. Um, I'm probably 125 is a good height for this right now. Um, and then I'll position it however I feel is necessary to get it where I want it using the sliders um, provided here in Lightroom. And that's it. As you can see, it happens very quickly. It's really easy to do. And uh, I hope you make killer identity plates. Good luck.